Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris, and I am back, and I'm working on a car winter survival car kit. In case you're in the snow, and the car either breaks down, or maybe you get into an accident, you spin out and end up in a dip someplace, you're stuck there. For a long time, maybe not days, maybe not weeks, but maybe several hours and it's really cold and you don't want to run the engine the whole time um, because maybe you don't have that much gas and there is a risk of carbon monoxide just running the car. So you, especially like if you're stuck in snow, it can, um, it does happen. So you really don't want to just run the car the whole time. Um, the exhaust pipe could be blocked and you could end up dead and not knock. Can't smell carbon monoxide, I can't think you just you just go to sleep. It's a peaceful death, I suppose. But we'd like to avoid that if we can. And so the idea is I wanted to have a stove that you can use to warm up some tea, some coffee, some hot cocoa, maybe a cup of ramen. Um, something like that. I already did a video on the stove, what it is how it works, how you put it together, all that fun stuff. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, I'm going to lie and say I'm going to link to it below or something, but I say that all the time and I never do it. So you guys should stop believing me. Is that what that was? That was nice. So the stove works really well. And this is the fuel source. However, in order to cook some ramen or some tea or whatever, you do need water. And the problem with water is if it's really cold, it freezes. So I was trying to figure out how I'd make this work. So if I kept the water bottle like this in the car, and I do most of the time, most of the time I'm bringing it in and out with me, but I also just have a couple of water bottles that are just often in the car. Um, this is a metal, stainless steel, big canister. If the water in here froze solid, there's not really a way for me to pour that out and cook it. Even with like a uh, Aquafina or something, plastic little bottle. There's not really a good way for me to, um, I mean, I guess if I have a knife, I can maybe cut the plastic off or something. Um, I don't know. I was trying to think of a solution for that. And then I came up with this. I forgot that I had these. This is the Mayday Emergency Drinking Water. It's got a five-year shelf life. I really don't see what would happen to it past the five years. Maybe the plastic deteriorates, I don't know. Recommended for marine, home, business, or anytime water is needed in an emergency. You check it by squeezing the pouch is what it says. If air or water escapes, do not use. Um, so apparently I got this in like February of 2018 and the expiration date is February 2023. So I still have you know, a year and a half or so to use this, which is fine. They're really cheap. I got it from the Army Navy store. It says 49 cents. It's also, it's not a ton of water. It really isn't. I mean, this is a pretty small package, but they don't take up much space. And um, it's, well, it's not a lot. It It is, depending on what's going on, enough. I was a bit surprised. There was a day where we were thirsty in the car. And um, yeah, we just didn't have water with us. and. I was like, you know what, let's try these. Let's see how this works and if this is even enough. And um, yeah, it was, it hit the spot. You, know, you probably want more, but this works. And if this is all you got, then this is what you got. But still, the freezing issue. But I like this because look at that. It fits right in there. So the question was, how stable is this once it's frozen? How difficult is it to heat up and melt? I needed to know that. So, stuck one in the freezer. It's frozen. It's been in there for a few hours. So, it still has some air in there, which is nice. So, it's not like, uh, I think I can get it out. I can get it out. 
But it just occurred to me, I don't have any matches with me over here. So I'm probably going to have to go grab some matches or something. Let's see. Oh, I should have washed my hands. I want to be clean with people. Alright, so here we go. So that peels open. Woo! I guess it wasn't completely frozen. I thought it was. I thought I had it. It's been in there for several hours, though. Well, it fits in there pretty nice. I feel like this will be fine. There we go. Let's open this up. This is the same one that I was using earlier, because, you know, waste not, want not. And you know, the last time I lit it and then put it inside the stove, I'm going to try it. This time I'm going to put it in here and then light it and see how that works. Because that feels safer to me. Um, I also, I wanted to try to snuff the, you yeah, can't, really, can't really do it with that, that way. It like you have to take it out. I don't like that so much. Probably have to figure something out there as well. Uh, oh well, let me grab some matches. Uh, while I'm grabbing these, please, if you enjoy these videos, find them helpful or interesting, you want to be a survival scientist like me, <laughs> like and subscribe. So this is basically the kit right here. So I got two cans because one is none, and just in case one leaks or evaporates or something like that. We got some extras. You see that? So we got two of these little canisters that I'm using. I've got some duct tape. I've got some emergency blankets, some of these hot heats, hot hands, whatever you want to call them. And then I've also got just in my little baggie some matches and a lighter. So let's do this. I don't know if that was the best approach. <laughs> no, you just leave the match to sit on there. But uh, yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Let's stick that on there. So this is already melting a little bit, it looks like. I'm just, I'm just sitting on here. I don't know how long it's going to take to go from um, frozen to boil. <laughs> but I think I'd be happy if it just goes from frozen to melt. So far, so good. I don't know that I want to just leave you guys here and make this a super long video while we watch water boil. That's not all that fun. But um, I think I'm happy with this. So if you look inside here, it looks like it's, um, I don't know, what is that? Is that mylar or something? I'm not sure what this is made out of. But it is a pretty durable plastic. So it's got a... Like kind of like a clear plastic coating and then some sort of thicker plastic which I'm guessing it seems like they use mylar for a bunch of different things I'm guessing maybe that's what it is but it is pretty it is pretty durable look at that room pretty easy but it does seem like this will be fine like it didn't shrink or expand or like didn't rupture while it was freezing um, when I'm squeezing these things and all that, they're they're pretty good. Um, I <laughs> may, I mean, cars do get hot. They get very hot in the summer. I don't know that they water boils at what is it 200, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know that they get two hundred twelve degrees. I've never 
seen a bottle of water in my car boil. So I'm thinking this is probably fine to keep in the car year round and you don't have to worry about it freezing and all that. The other side of this, just gonna move this over a little bit and we'll keep an eye on it. Um, so I've got this little container and my plan, and I will make a video on this part of it later on. Once I Actually, I'm going to have to wait until it gets colder to test this out. So just so you guys know, you don't have to wait until it gets cold. You don't have to wait for me to know my plan. Is I've got this duct tape. And it's not a ton. I basically just wrap some duct tape around a matchstick to, so it takes up less space. You can buy them as already like this, but this is much cheaper just to make them myself. And then you also got a match if you want it. Um, but then there's also these emergency blankets. And this one has the dimensions on it. It's 51 inches by 83 inches. And then I measured, well, I didn't measure. I had my, my friend measure her car. And this looks like it'll work perfectly to line the inside of the car and try to keep the heat in. So I've noticed that when you turn your heat off or your air conditioner or whatever, the car immediately gets to the temperature of outside. It does seem like maybe air conditioning, it seems like it stays a little cooler longer than staying warm in the, in the winter. But basically you turn the heat off, it's immediately freezing cold in there um, because there's no insulation. So I'm thinking if you line your windows in the door with Mylar or emergency blanket, whatever, that's going to help hold that whatever heat you got in there in the car um, and also just kind of like make it smaller as well something just kind of like maybe in the back seat um, and so yeah so I got some of these guys that's the plan there and then the hot hands these guys were great I can't remember if I used this particular brand name or not but we use these when hiking and stuff they were just fine eight hours I'm skeptical, but maybe. Um, so that's a good way to go. This can help keep you warm. And then this is a Survive Outdoors Longer Emergency Bivy. And we did test one of these out. Uh, me and Nate went on a little hike last winter, and it was colder than what we liked. <laughs> and he kind of started whining and complaining about how he was cold. And we had some of these with us, and he opened it up. Oh, that, there we go. Look at that. It's pretty, pretty well melted at this point. But he, we, he opened it up, got in, and here's Nate right here. How did you feel wearing this, or uh, when you were <laughs> using this thing? I felt very warm, a little warmish. Yeah, were you, were you comfortable? He was the only one who was comfortable, I think. Like, he was fine. I was trying to, like, use the twig stove and everything to yeah. cook and get warm and put up a shelter and all that. He's just sitting there snug like a bug in a rug in his little plastic bivy just fine. So, they do work. They don't seem like they work because they're just so stinking thin, but they do work. Um... However, with these is you definitely, you don't want to be like naked in here or like with uh, bare skin because uh, what, there's like, I guess, two different types of heat loss. Maybe there's more, but there's like the radiant heat loss and then there's like a direct transfer. So this helps with the radiant heat loss. So, you know, any, you know, your body heat that you're projecting and just like going out word, it reflects that back to you and helps you stay warm. However, if your skin is right up against it, um, it'll, it'll just like, you know, like if you just, if you sleep on the cold ground, like it, it just kind of sucks all the heat right out of you. And this will do that. So make sure you've got like some long sleeves on, uh, something, keep your socks on, you know, whatever, so that you don't have skin to skin, skin to plastic contact. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. And so there's just a couple of those in there. In case you know it's passengers. 
how we're looking on our water. So at this point, <laughs> it is just about, oops, let's get closer. It's just about melted. The stove doesn't get hot to the touch, which is one of the many things I like about it. Now, this is good to know to test this out here. Take a look inside. See that? Um, it's not much water. It really isn't. Now that I'm seeing it in a cup like this, that's not quite enough. So, good to know. Just drinking this when I was a little bit thirsty, like, I felt good about it. However, yeah, trying to cook with that, like, that's not very much tea or coffee. I, I'm i not sure that that's enough for some ramen noodles. Like, one of the cups of ramen, you know? Cup, cup of noodle, I think they call it. I don't know that it's enough for that. So, you know what? I don't even think I even have any to test it out. Maybe that's the next test. How much water do you need for one of those things? So now I need to recalculate how many of these things do I need. Or does she need? Also me. So this is this is where I'm doing one from my carburetor. I was gonna try to drink this, but this it's got a lot of floaties and stuff in here. Apparently this cup was dirty. Oh, it's warm. It's warm. It's not boiling yet. It's warm though. Uh, so we're at about 16 minutes. I'm not sure. I wasn't paying attention to when I put that in exactly. But we went from frozen to getting warm in not that long of a time. And without much water loss. And without a whole lot of effort. So I'm going to call this a win. I'm going to see if there are maybe bigger packages. And even if there's not, I'll you know, just get them more. They're 49 cents. At least they were a couple years ago. I can't imagine they're much more now. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, ideally, yes, I'll have a water bottle. I often bring this with me when I go into places because I'm thirsty all the time. And I'm trying not to drink pop, soda, coffee, whatever. Just trying to drink water. And so I just fill that up and take it places. And I don't have to ideally buy water because I don't really like buying water. I don't have to do that. Like and subscribe. I'm rambling now. And... Uh, Keep an eye out on more videos like this. They will be uh, coming on how to prepare your car for winter, as well as my regular proper stuff that I do, fun stuff, self-defense, not tying. Probably won't be doing any more gardening. My garden, eh, I really slacked off this year. Chala, blame Chala. She's been eating all, she, she ate everything. So I gave up. <laughs> Our weather didn't cooperate either. Thanks for watching.